we have in studio with us uh, EFF leader Julius Malema is here to answer my questions, but more importantly, I want him to answer your questions. I hope you've been studying political party manifestos over the last while. There's, of course, the concept of personality po- uh, politics in South Africa. Our political leaders are largely characters themselves. That is an aside because I want to drill down into policy that's on black and white and how it will impact and better the lives of South Africans and South Africa. A question this morning when I introduced and I said we're speaking to Julius Malema in studio, Cape Talk listener asked why. (laughs) And it's quite simple. He's the leader of the third largest party in this Republic of South Africa. He's the leader of a political party that has the third highest number of seats in the Western Cape Provincial Legislature. 42-seat legislature, they have two. But they managed to get 83,000 votes here in the Western Cape in the 2019 election. Just like I have offered Julius Malema to come in and answer mine and your questions, if other political parties say, yes, I will afford and I will avail myself, I will come and I will present myself to not only less to give it, but also to the listeners of Cape Talk, because that is what elections are all about. Political parties put forward a platform, they put forward a proposal, and if the electorate likes it or not, they can then decide on the 29th of May. Julius Malema, really appreciate your time. You enjoy Cape Town, actually. Thank you eh? very much. Yeah. You, you, <laughs> oh, I heard you yesterday in Google Air too. Yeah. Uh, at the launch of the EFF's Western Cape Mani- Manifesto. You, you, you enjoy, enjoy Cape Town. Well, I work here. I'm a member of parliament. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I've got uh, a, a place in the parliamentary village. So, um, somehow, it's mm. my second home. Mm. But yeah. do you want to live in Khandandal? Do no. you Do you want to live in Khandandal, the president's residence? In other words, do you really want to be president of the South of, of the Republic of South Africa? Well, if uh, the voters decide so, I'm available. And um, I think I've got what it takes to occupy that office. In order to to convince the electorate, Mm -hmm. you need more than just a niche Mm. or a subsection of the electorate. You need to convince a majority of of an electorate to put their faith and trust in you as a political party who then votes for you as MPs in the National Assembly. Over the last 10 years of the EFF contesting, politics in in South Africa do you think that you've managed to attract that majority of voters making your message as accessible black white whatever demographic middle class working class do you think you've done that enough I think we've done very well we are the only party if you were to check uh, in the past uh, two national elections we're the only party that has got uh, a green arrow going up uh, we are the only ones who are increasing and uh, we are the only ones even now through the polls that are going uh, to increase their numbers. The rest of the other parties, especially the two before us, are all declining. And that is a, a scientific um, a proof that indeed the EFF is convincing mm-hmm. a lot of people uh, to follow uh, it's manifest. There are those that dis- distrust you, and I would then yep. isolate a particular white voter demographic. I would isolate also a, a middle class voter demographic. There are people who distrust you with your policies and your position on nas- nationalization, on mm. on expropriation of 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 land. Have you been trying to allay any of those fears? I, d- I don't know if you saw uh, the. Um, Crystal Visa at mm-hmm. the at the weekend videos of him at a business news conference said saying that Julius Malema is right. We we need more black land ownership in South Africa. He gets it because he probably asks you to come and maybe talk in more detail <laughs> as a captain of the industry. But are you doing enough to get other voters to in, to entrust you with your message? Well, the middle class, especially black middle class is very receptive of the EFF because they can relate to what the EFF is speaking about. Uh, We haven't made enough inroads on the white constituency because of uh, 
it's a privileged position that when you say we now have to share this, they like I'm so used to the size of the cake and now I'm told that uh, I need to share it with other people. So that is their reluctance, but they understand the message and the captain of the industry, Christo Viso, is correct that in the absence of black people owning the land, the investment and any other economic opportunity that exists in South Africa is threatened by lack of ownership of the land by the majority uh, of our people. I don't have access to him. I don't speak to captains mm. of industry. I just make my own presentations in different institutions. I never meet them privately. And I've made it my business not to engage with anyone uh, in private conversations. So I go make presentations at um, places like RMB and other investment uh, uh, institutions to explain that there's nothing anti-white about the policy of the EFF. So yesterday I said, you must tell you and Rupert that when we take over, we, the first land we're going to take is his. And how do you take it? He has to share that land with others. Why do you own so much land as one individual and have so many people living in congested environment and unable to participate in the agricultural economy or any other economic activity because they don't have access mm. to land. So that's all we say. In your manifesto, you're saying the EFF will nationalize the Reserve Bank, create state-owned banks mm. in different sectors, establish an asset, uh, state-owned asset management firm, um, raise taxes, prioritize transformation over price considerations, establish state-owned companies, nationalize construction companies, designate key goods and service exclusively for the state. Um, mm. That causes some consternation for particularly people in the established market. Are you afraid of the established market? Well, uh, they shouldn't be threatened by anything. The ownership of the Reserve Bank by the state is just an affirmation of our sovereignty because the main majority of uh, the reserved banks in the world are owned by the state. And we cannot have our own reserve bank owned by individuals. So that's all we say. And with nationalization, it doesn't mean we're going to take a, a construction com big construction company and make it a state construction company. No. We, nationalization, we mean establishment of a state housing construction company, state road construction company, uh, and there could be a private-owned uh, construction companies, but the state must have its own internal capacity to do its own things. And that's what we're saying. When we say we're going to nationalize the mines, it doesn't mean we're going to take Anglo-American mine. It doesn't mean we're going to take Impala Platinum mine. It simply means the state must uh, own a mining company that will be given preference, especially on profitable uh, minerals. The same goes with the banks. We're saying we establish a state-owned bank. That's what nationalization of the EFF means. Because nationalization simply means state ownership. Mm. And uh, we are going to establish our own bank. And then the rest of other banks must compete. Mm. This is not a threat to the banks. Look at private schools. The private schools are there and public schools are there. The establishment of public schools did not lead to the closure of private schools. The establishment of state-owned hospitals never led to the closure of private hospitals. If anything, the private hospitals are thriving more than the state-owned mm. uh, um, uh, hospitals. So why, when it comes to the banking sector or insurance sector, the financial sector, mm. people say, no, you can't interfere there. Mm. But everywhere else, we, we've got private and public owned. I want to focus on your record in mm. Parliament. Yeah. Um, you say Cape Town is your second home, because this is where you do yeah. work. Last week, the Parliamentary Monitoring Group brought out a report on the report card of who attends parliamentary committees the most. You as leader of the EFF, a public representative sent by voters, 
The report by PMG said that you only attended 30% of parliamentary committee meetings. Are you actually working in parliament? No, I'm a, I'm not a member of um, uh, many other committees. I'm a member of one committee of ethics. And uh, I've always made sure that I attend the meetings of the ethics committee. And if I don't, I send my apology. And when I attend those meetings, I make meaningful contributions which are, in terms of quality, more than the people who attend. Because to attend and to make meaningful contributions are two different things. There are people who go there every day and because committees give people food. They are going there for food. And they don't make any uh, constructive input uh, in those committees. But the EFF took a deliberate decision not to deploy me into uh, many committees because I'm a president of a party. I'm also a member of parliament. And I've got extra responsibilities, not only in South Africa, in the continent as well. Tony asks Julius, how will the EFF be managing our fishing harbours and the fishing industry for the benefit of the previously disadvantaged communities in the Western Cape? To be the ones that are given uh, fishing uh, permits and then be able to establish their own companies and sell to multinational companies. This thing that you've got one big a multinational company dominating the fishing industry in the Western Cape must come to an end. Our people are going to be empowered and will open markets for them uh, internationally and locally to make sure that whatever they are fishing gets to be sold mm. uh, to some people in the country and the world. Wahid asks, I'm looking for an alternative to both the ANC and the DA, but mm. how can I trust the EFF when they appear to flip-flop between issues constantly? Example, Mr. Malema defending Jacob Zuma, then actively worked to oust him, now appears to be back on his side with his new party. I want consistency in principles, and why should I trust the EFF? But there's no flip-flopping on, on Jacob Zuma. Remember, you were there in Parliament when we were removing uh, Jacob Zuma. We said this is the most corrupt government. But now, Stats has confirmed that actually there's been more corruption under Ramaphosa than uh, Zuma. That Ramaphosa is the only president who was found with stashed money in, under the mattresses and under uh, the sofas. And that Ramaphosa collected millions of monies from big private uh, capital in the name of CR17. So I'm not defending Zuma. I'm saying in comparison, we we thought we were in a worse uh, situation under Zuma and it looks like we're in a much, much more worse situation now. The unemployment has extremely increased under uh, Ram uh, Ramaphosa compared to Zuma. Uh, the economy has been declining under Ramaphosa and the levels of crime in the Western Cape and all over South Africa under Ramaphosa have extremely increased. So, uh, and when I say that, it doesn't mean I favor Zuma. I'm just comparing the two terms. But to fight crime, you say in your manifesto you want to employ an additional 100,000 police officers by 2016. South Africa already has something like 115,000 police officers. You want to double that. We have one of the highest per capita police to citizen ratios in the world. It's clearly been shown that more police officers does not necessarily signal a decrease in crime in this country. Well, we need more men uh, on the grounds um, because we need to combat this crime and it should be done within the shortest space of time. Um, and you need police leadership. So let's take a Western Cape, for instance. The problem is that you'll find majority of station commissioners involved with these gangsters who are going around extorting people and taking uh, monies uh, from people and sharing that money uh, with the police. So you need a complete overhaul of the police system in the Western Cape. If it means sending them out of the Western Cape and bringing people from KZN, Eastern Cape, uh, Limpopo, into Western Cape to fight gangsterism, to fight drugs, 
uh, let's do so. You want to you want to give bonuses for police officers arresting dangerous criminals? Uh, that, that's monetizing. That's that's monetizing what should be a a function, uh, a general function and, and and duty for all police no, officers. No. But you say in your manifesto, bonuses for police officers arresting dangerous criminals. Everyone who performs well everywhere, there is what we call uh, performance bonuses, and that's what we are saying. Cash in transit haste. You're chasing most dangerous criminals who are carrying five million. And you know that even if I return this five million, I don't stand to get anything out of this. Uh, why should I take this kind of risk if it's not going to be compensated? When you arrest uh, those criminals, they've got five million, they offer you two million, and you get tempted to take it because police officers are not paid uh, enough to fight uh, dangerous uh, criminals, including investigation. We need to investigate. Police who investigate successfully because police arrest. Then the case gets messed up by investigating office. If you investigate successfully and that case is properly prosecuted, there must be bonuses. Mm -hmm. Uh, for such. Let's go to a question on the voice note line 0725671567. Yes, morning Lester. Flores here from Booster again. I would like to ask uh, Juju there, morning uh, uh, Julius, what's your stance on the current school matric pass rate? Uh, any chance when you come into uh, governing this uh, beautiful country of ours that you will do something about the state of education? Thank you. Bye-bye. Let me add another message here. Um, should politicians, should office bearers be forced to use public services, include public hospitals and public schools? Is you, are your children in public schools? No, no. They are not in public schools because there are no public schools. The ANC has collapsed the education system. And uh, you cannot say to me, Mr. Malema, you are now in parliament. Go to a public hospital that is dysfunctional. You are actually asking me to commit suicide. So we need to. As the but 80% EFF... of South Africans rely on a public health service if we are to feel empathy to those who are making use of crumbling public services that surely we should have the people making the decisions also not just having empathy but actually experiencing that themselves no you can't ask me in this name of empathy that i must commit suicide so that i can rescue 80 percent i have to be alive to so that i can take over this government and correct those hospitals and under the EFF government, which will be having decision-making powers, we are now going to force you to use public hospitals because those hospitals will be functional, those schools will be functional. And as part of our commitment to education, it must be free, it must be of quality, it must be decolonized. And we want uh, mathematics to be compulsory uh, in schools because we want our children to learn the necessary skills. Fervood said, what, what will a black child do uh, with mathematics? And therefore denied us that opportunity. Mm -hmm. So we need to take it back and teach our children that which were denied. But 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 largely and, and the statistics and the and the methodology that's used that the more middle class people use public service the greater investment. My wife and I, we live next door to, yeah. to, to a, a public school. Literally, we could throw our kid over the fence and then she yeah. lands. Yeah. We have taken the decision mm. to use and go to a public school. Fairly decently priced school fees. Mm -hmm. I understand my privilege of augmenting here and there, but I've decided as a South African, if I want a better service for all South Africans as a middle class South African, I need to buy in. Why aren't more politicians doing the same? No, no. Uh, you are so privileged to stay next to a public school that is functional. It's not the reality in Google. No, it's the private school that's right next door. We take and we take our child, our child yeah. to a government school. That's what I'm saying. So you are so one of the few privileged people who still have uh, public schools that are functional. There are functional schools that are public that I know. But generally, 
that is not uh, the case. Okay. And it's not middle class that makes public education to be functional. It is the deliberate decision by government mm. to ensure that public education must be functional. Okay, more of your questions. I want to drill down also. Who is the EFF's premier candidate? Because... Gaten McKenzie, the national leader of Good, he wants to be premier. Patricia Delo, the national leader of Good, Good Party, wants to be premier. ANC is considering that lady Pando here in the Western Cape. Who is the EFS candidate? Leon asks, Lest I appreciate you giving us exposure to a wide range of views, but could you please ask Mr. Malema where the EFF support for the LGBT community comes from? If I'm not mistaken, they were the only party to speak out against the vicious anti-LGBT laws in Uganda. Our manifesto is very clear when it comes to LGBTQ plus communities. We are going to make sure that they are protected and they enjoy the rights like any other uh, South African. And we have been the only party that has been vocal against the violation of the rights of the LGBTQ plus communities. Uh, when uh, uh, Uganda passed uh, that law, we went to the Ugandan embassy and said this is unacceptable. When Ghana uh, passed a similar law, we said uh, this is not going to be allowed in a continent where we have to respect their human rights. But you also opened with op- with welcome with open arms, uh, Professor Patrick Lumumba, and there have been very vocal protests against him speaking at EFF events. There was a protest at UCT quite recently. Mm. We delivered. A, a an EFF lecture. He is in very much admiration of Uganda's policy. How how is that ever congruent? You know, when people organize protests, that is not genuine. You can't even listen to that, because Lumumba supports that Ugandan uh, law, but he's not the one who passed the law. The Ugandan president was here in South Africa, and nothing was said about him. Uh, but this, that was an attack on the EFF. Lumumba knows the EFF policy when it comes to LGBTQ plus uh, community. So have, have you denounced his, his support of the Ugandan? Yes, we, de- we denounced that and we denounced the Ugandan law. And uh, when he was at UCT, he knew that the EFF position is very clear on that matter. But that was used to attack the EFF, and not genuinely to protect the rights of the LGBTQ plus communities. Where are these UCT people at the Ugandan embassy, at the Ghana embassy? Where were they when Ugandan president, who signed into law, this law, Mm -hmm. visited South Africa officially? There were no protests. So that was not a legitimate uh, concern. You're also welcome to call and maybe have some repartee with Julius Malema, 0214460567, but here's a voice note. Uh, good morning, Lester. Uh, Lester, uh, can you ask uh, uh, Julius uh, what he's going to do? Uh, you know, him speaking about land so boldly, about the land of the the Khoi and the Sun people. Uh, surely they have a right to, you know, land as well, uh, and full rights as such. Uh, thanks a lot, uh, Lester. Have a good morning. I'll add a, 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 a written question to that. Julius mm-hmm. is seen as the most racist politician in South Africa. Your narrative is, and focus is only to black people. How can colored people trust you? Well, colored people are black people. When I say we're fighting for black people, I at the center of that is also the colored community, which was highly oppressed and isolated from the land ownership and to participate in the economy of our country our leadership has got more colors uh, uh, in the leadership than any other political party um, uh, in south africa because other parties don't even have leaders so the leadership is the membership at the same time so you can't say uh, this is the leadership because they are leading their own jackets so we're not the most racist party uh, we are the most transparent and open party that says these are the realities of our country and they can only be addressed through uh, this way. The Koi and the Sun are not actually uh, some sub-subject. They are at the core and the center of our struggle to 
reclaim the land because those are the rightful owners of the land who were found here, who engaged uh, in the wars uh, of uh, dispossession because this is their land and they will benefit from this land ownership that the EFF speaks about. The race for the Western Cape is, is on. I, I don't think that um, there are various polls. And if I look at the, the data from local government election, mm. um, that the Democratic Alliance likely to still re regain a majority of votes mm. in, in this province. But it's highly contested. Alan Windy contests as the incumbent. Gaten McKenzie, the leader of the National Patriotic Alliance, Patricia Delo, there's thoughts that Naledi Pando could be the ANC's candidate. What's your thoughts of, 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 of national leadership contesting the Western Cape and what it tells you about the battle for this province? Well, uh, the national leadership uh, can contest anyway. Uh, we believe that um, you must um, uh, put the best forward. Remember the ANC once took... Uh, uh, Togo Didiza to be a mayoral candidate uh, in Tuan, and that did not help them. They still lost with the national leader, so it doesn't mean uh, anything. We don't have a premier candidate because mm -hmm. we, if you read the manifesto, we want to do away with provinces. We don't understand why they are provinces um, and uh, uh, premiers and MECs and members of the legislature because legislature is supposed to make law. So which law is going to be made in Western Cape which does not comply, apply in Limpopo? There has to be one law which cut across because we are a unitary state under one constitution. So these structures were created to create jobs for ANC people. They were not created to genuinely uh, make any intervention. You know, your councillor is more important than the premier. Your councillor, if there is a sewer blockage, you can call him, he can come there and call the council to come and unblock the sewer. The premier can't do that. A, a, mayor, in, a mayor of a metro has, has more power yes. and influence than a premier. And, and implementing powers. Uh, Lester, Mr. Malema, um, the constitution includes white people as well. However, you are constantly spewing hateful and hurtful words towards the white race. Why are why are, why are you doing this? Democracy includes also white people in South White Africa. people understand my message very well because I say it in English. They are just uh, uh, trying to be uh, sensitive unnecessarily. No EFF has ever attacked any white person. Our position is very clear that those who are oppressed economically must be liberated to be equal. Mm -hmm. To white people i never said in my articulation let's drive white people uh, to the sea i've always said let they be equality and white people who are racist and suffer from white supremacy are the ones who are refusing the equality because they don't see themselves sharing a dinner table with monkeys that's how they view us and the eff is trying to bring these people on our table and we're not going to allow that so only white supremacists will not uh, accept the equality of our people. That's why Christo Viso says, let black people own the land. Because it is in the interest of all of us mm. for black people to own the land. He understands the message. He hears the message. Nothing anti-white about the EFF. Uh, we'll, we're running out of time, but let's have a, another voice note. George, please. Good morning, Lester. So, um, so my question to Mr. Malema, you know, um, Julius, I hope you don't mind me calling you Julius. So um, it's, it's no secret that you're a man of, of means. Um, financially, I don't think you have to ever worry about going to bed hungry. So I'm just curious, what have you personally, out of your wealth, your own personal wealth, what have you done for your electorates for the needy for the hungry in south africa please tell us well i take a lot of kids to school myself personally uh, i build uh, some of the poor people houses and uh, i always ensure that um, we 
try by all means to intervene in poverty-stricken families. I always preach that message even with the leadership of the EFF. I have recently uh, launched a soup kitchen in my own uh, township. Uh, I'm no longer uh, staying there. My grandmother's house is there. And because of my association with that community, I thought I need to make uh, you know, a contribution in practically changing the lives of our people. So I live for people and I help people on daily basis. And uh, some of them, I don't even remember them. I've, I've heard another guy on a, on a podcast saying uh, his friend told him that uh, he is at school and at the university because Julius Malema uh, paid for his uh, uh, fees. I promise to ask every political leader yeah. at the beginning of this election campaign to ask every political leader what it's like to be a working class South African, a working family in South Africa. Mr. Malema, what does a loaf of blue ribbon toaster cost at a spa <laughs> shop? How much is a loaf of bread a staple of South Africans? I Well, I, 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 would, I wouldn't know how much is the price of a loaf of bread because uh, I'm 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 in a position where uh, I don't have to go and buy a loaf of bread, but you know bread and all of the stable food that must be removed from that, and the government must ensure that those stable food are accessible. Uh, to our people. Uh, the president better be doing a quick survey of the shops because I also <laughs> will be asking the same as I yeah, will ask yeah. all political party, national leaders of the political parties, how much do they feel of the experience of working families in South Africa? That's unfortunately all we have time for. Mr. Yeah. Malema, thanks so much. Thank really you. appreciate Best Thank of luck for the rest of the two months.